Paddy, so two stints with the Pro Tiers. Um, you were saying earlier, obviously, in the Hunty Cronier era, era, I beg your pardon, more as a, as a fit, the fitness consultant. But then with Gary Kirsten in your second stint, yeah. um, you will know better than anyone what um, that uh, attitude and and well, mental fortitude is like in the dressing room. And we saw, obviously, the Pro Tiers crashing out of yet another ICC tournament this weekend. Um, what did you observe um, in the Pro Tiers dressing room uh, in terms of why there is this kind of hoodoo around ICC tournaments and what did you do to try and change that? Well, it's difficult to say what happened in the dressing room now in the recent uh, mm -hmm. ICC uh, tournament. But certainly when Gary and Kirsten and myself were with the team, uh, we had a uh, Champions Trophy together and we had a T20 World mm -hmm. Cup together. And our approach was to really address the concept of choker, um, what is the impact on each individual, to really open up that wound, to try and clean mm -hmm. it out per se, to face it, to be honest about it, to address it, to make it okay to acknowledge that in high pressure moments I tend to shut down or my brain gets a little bit too mm. busy or whatever it might be. But we try to take the real face your fears approach and be mm. really honest, be really authentic about it. Um, it didn't work in terms of results. I think in terms of players' comfort levels around that, the players who are more comfortable to be open and honest and vulnerable, I think they found some relief in that. Mm. There's it's, it very much is a South African male thing where we like to be tough. Cowboys don't cry, don't show vulnerabilities, mm. don't show weaknesses, which I think is completely inauthentic. I think it puts more pressure than anything else. And I, I wonder to what degree that happened at this last mm. uh, Champions Trophy, where players go out there and they try and put on their, their smiley face mask, their tough guy masks. We fine, we don't choke, we've got this one. But the reality is, other than an out-and-out -out psychopath, I have not met an international or professional athlete in any sport that doesn't have vulnerability, insecurity, doubt, negative thoughts, lack of confidence at some period of time. Mm. I've met very few who actually own that and are honest about it and work with it. The majority of them, which is also the majority of the South African cricket team, try and cover it up, try and pretend that those things don't exist. And I think the, the energy of trying to cover up that insecurity or doubt, it just takes more energy and more burns off more mental energy mm. as opposed to facing it and just being real, which I think opens up a whole new conversation in that the concept of mental toughness, or mental fortitude or mental strength, it, there is no such thing. It doesn't exist. Um, and to prove that, you know, the research that's been done by people far cleverer than you and I, and there's over 30 papers that have been published in journals, not one of those 30 papers has the same definition of mental toughness as the next. Mm. So there is no agreement on the definition. People say, well, there actually isn't a definition, but mental toughness is made up of certain subcomponents like grit, um, determination, staying focused, um, unwavering uh, attention to task, mm. et cetera, et cetera. When one looks at those 30 papers, there's over 76 different attributes uh, across the board that they say makes up mental toughness. Um, so I don't actually believe there's any such thing. And I certainly don't prescribe, I don't try and coach players to be mentally tough. Mm. Because it isn't. There isn't any such thing. What I work with players is to try and be real, try and be honest, uh, be on who you are. If you're scared, it's okay. If, if you're nervous, it's okay. If there's anxiety, if you have self-doubt, you will have self-doubt, that's okay. Welcome to the human race. Mm. Um, and then to still work with that, you can still focus on the ball and be clear on what your job needs to be despite that happening. But the problem is coaches, sports psychologists, they wanting players and they judge players positively if they perceive to be mentally strong or mentally tough. And if they have any vulnerabilities or they're not mentally tough, they're labeled as mentally soft, mentally mm. fragile, mentally weak, and that is career limiting. So players don't ever own up to that because mm. they know it's, going to, it's negatively judged and I'll probably be dropped. The reality, every one of those coaches, if they played, they know they had those mental fragilities. Mm. So we've got this huge myth that we're perpetuating. Um, it doesn't exist, and mm. as soon as I, I think the South African cricket team as well, just own what you're feeling, own what's going on, it's okay. If I go back to sort of what one of the real 
peaks for me in a, in a way. It was a small peak, but it was uh, when South Africa in 2012 was going on to play a test match against England, which would have had us, had us win the test match and mm. become the number one test team in the world. And on morning two, when the team got together in the huddle and Graham Smith had a chat and he said, guys, how are we feeling today? Mm. And A.B. de Villiers said, you know what, I'm actually quite nervous. And when he said that, the whole team, there was this sort of like this decrease in pressure. It's like, mm. wow. So AB's nervous. It gives me permission to actually express and feel what I'm feeling. Yeah, because sure. I think we were all nervous. Mm. But he was able to be real in that tough mm. guy environment. And we try to bring as much of that realness mm. in as possible. But it's a huge adjustment if you've been brought up as a, as a male, particularly male athlete your whole life, trying to pretend to everyone that mm. you're not scared and you're tough and you be the guy. But we know it's not true.